one application of matrices is that we can use them to store systems of linear equations. Let's see how. Suppose that we have a system of linear equations. The example I'm working with here has two equations and three variables. We're going to take this and we're going to store it as a matrix. Here's how we're going to go about that. Each equation in the system is going to correspond to the row of a matrix. So because we have two equations, we're looking for a matrix that has two rows. Each variable in the system is going to correspond to a column. So we have an X1 column, an X2 column, an X3 column, and one additional column. These numbers over to the right of the equal sign will give us a fourth column. So we look at this equation. The first equation corresponds to the first row. And we look at the coefficients that appear. One, x1, zero, x2. There's nothing here, but we could write in a zero at two if we wanted, two, x3 equals four, two, x1, negative one, x2, one, x3, equals zero. And this matrix stores this system. And it gets its own name. It's called the augmented matrix of the system. Let me see one last comment. You know, if you're looking online for help or something, that's certainly always fine. You might see slightly different notation though. Because what a lot of textbooks and authors do is they say that this vast column is fundamentally different from these other columns. These columns correspond to variables. The vast column doesn't. So what you frequently see is authors put a dotted vertical line to separate off this vast column from the rest. Our textbook, um, David Lay, does not do that, so I don't do it either. I want my notes and video and stuff to match up with the textbook. But if you, again, if you're looking for help somewhere and you do see a dotted line like this, that's 
that's what it means. It's just um, it's just to make this thing a little easier to read.